all my loves it's Monica and welcome back to a new vlog today I'm doing a little bit of a book shopping vlog oh okay bye <laughs> anyways today I'm doing a little bit of a book shopping vlog but it's a little bit of a special book shopping vlog because I'm currently in LA and I'm visiting Elias who I haven't seen in years and it's been amazing just to get to hang out again and Sarah's also here visiting with me and our friend Michelle is coming with us today to all the bookshops so we're gonna take you on a little tour oh there he is hello hello <laughs> this is my bookshelf yes Monica is in my house or apartment mm-hmm it's the first time we've seen each other in like four years. Yeah. Which is crazy. But yes, we're gonna go be going to like four or five bookshops today and they all look beautiful. So excited to take you all along with me. And then of course I'll do a little book haul at the end. Also, here is a little quick outfit of the day. I just have this doing a very pink inspired outfit. My favorite pink cowboy boots. Yeah. So we are currently at the Huntington Library, which to be honest, I just heard library and I didn't really do any research, so I didn't realize that it's not like, I was expecting like a library, <laughs> like an actual library, and it's more of like a botanic garden situation, but it is beautiful. So there is that, but yeah, <laughs> that's on me, that's my bad. But we are just doing a little exploring in the outdoors. We went and saw some really old books. I love an old book. And yeah, that is our day. Also, I did want to really quickly give a big thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Friday AI. And Friday is definitely like when I first saw the service, I had one of those moments where I was like, wow, the future really is now. Um, so I'm gonna throw it to future me to tell you a little bit about that. Monica from the future here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Friday AI, which again is one of the coolest things I have ever used. Basically it is a AI writing assistant, but it can also do so much more than that. So Friday basically makes writing content and generating like content ideas super easy. Anything from writing blog posts, articles to video titles and outlines and all of this stuff like it makes it so easy by using AI you just input like your keywords topic the tone that you want all this information you just input all of that and it helps you come up with these ideas to outline things it's super fascinating so for example when I write a, an article or when I used to write papers one of the things that I struggled with the most was writing intros like I just always struggled with that kind of wording when you're not really into the research part of things you're just like trying to entice people to read more and Friday has a whole tool that's for helping you write intros so you put in like your keywords and things and like tone and it spits out a few different intros that you can choose from and use to really kick off your writing and if I had had a tool like this especially back when I was writing a lot of papers the way that this would have changed my life and they also have this really cool new tool called the AI artist and it's in beta right now and it's been really helpful for me just like as a writer because you're able to put in different keywords and idea and Friday outputs a visual image like an actual image that the AI has created based off of those terms so for example if I wanted a magical library in the style of Studio Ghibli like it could do that and that is amazing and also like so inspiring again like as a writer to have just like how something be able to like help you visualize things is so fascinating and just like in general it's really fun to play with and just see what the tech can do if you want to try out friday you can use my code which is here on the screen and that will get you 50 percent off of their pro package 
And yeah, it's definitely one of the coolest things that I have ever tried out in my life. Like I am so intrigued to see what the future of this is going to be. I also have a cool online event called Experience Hey Friday, and this is on their Facebook group where they're asking people for feedback for the platform. And this is open to all users and you're able to win various prizes and memberships, but the event is only lasting for a month. So be sure to check them out on Facebook. I will have them linked down below. Now onto the rest of the book shopping vlog. of our book shopping adventure. Um, yeah, so the Huntington Library was stunning. Definitely more of a botanic garden. <laughs> I did not do my research, but it was really beautiful regardless, like just to walk around and see like the Rose Garden and the Japanese Garden was stunning. And we took some really cute photos and everything. So it was delightful. And then we went and got lunch at Chez Ma's. I think um, it was delicious. Elias had been there before and really recommended it and really loved it, so loved getting to go there. But now we are going into Lost Books, which is a new bookstore, new-ish bookstore, um, that was opened up by the same people who created the last bookstore, which is a bookstore that I love. We're not going there on this trip just because we've all been there so many times before, so we're just going to a bunch of like different new bookstores that we haven't been to before. And this one is like, a plant lover's dream. I'm so excited to show you all. I have found a manga in a really amazing edition of Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, which I've never read, but this edition is so beautiful, so I might need to.
we are in the car. We are about to head to our third and final bookshop. There's Michelle in the back and Sarah looking at her purchases or oh, my purchase or phone. Good. I don't know. <laughs> looking at something anyways we are heading out to our third and final bookshop for the day so we just went to the ripped bodice which is a bookshop that focuses on romance and it was so cute i really love the style of having a bookshop that is entirely focused on one genre there is one in new york city called the mysterious bookshop that focuses on all mysteries and thrillers and i just feel like there should be more of them like i would love a fantasy one anyways and i'd love a romance one in new york but yeah, it was really lovely and now we are heading to a Barnes & Noble. This one's really cool because it's in an old theater so I think that would be just fun to look at decor wise. So yeah, that is our next stop. So I gotta say, we're currently in the Barnes & Noble and this is definitely the coolest Barnes & Noble I've ever been in. Like, I just love that they kept the original, like, 80s, 90s movie theater aesthetic, like, vibe. So it's really cool, like, just the ambiance of it. I'm obsessed. So I have just checked out. I am now the proud owner of many, many books. Getting home with all of this will indeed be interesting. I'll do a haul later though. All right, Sarah, it's the end of the day. Which bookstore out of the three we went to is your favorite? I really liked The Ripped Bodice. It was cute. And I just like romance books. And I liked the vibes. Michelle? Um, aesthetically? Lost Books was so beautiful, but The Ripped Bodice is a classic, um, one of my favorites, so I love it the most. But I also love this Studio City Barnes & Noble too. It's a good one. Yeah. Elias? So as you can see here, I'm still trying to make a decision at this glorious book bookstore, which is this Barnes & Noble. And honestly, I have to say, this is my sort of style aesthetically, just because I really like the old, sty old school style of like the movie theater. I just think it's just like conceptually really cool. So, and this is the bookstore where I bought the most books. So, I did buy a couple books at the Ripped Bodice. I thought it was coming going in to see some like horror. Wait, horror? horror? The Ripped Bodice. Okay. No, no, ripped okay. Bodice we need to educate. Romance. <laughs> you know, in like okay. Pirates of the Caribbean, right? They're wearing the corsets. You rip it yeah, open. See, yeah, and that's why the name for you know, a romance book is also colloquially known a as a ripper. bodice ripper. You know, this, this, head 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 this hetero stuff, the this hetero stuff, this is, I, I really like this location. Yes. But no, Barnes and Noble was pretty basic. <laughs> but my answer was like really long. <laughs> <laughs> and then we started bullying. <laughs> so I think my favorite bookstore was also the Ripped Bodice, just because I really like the idea of like a genre specific bookstore. I just think those are really fun. But I love this Barnes and Noble. This is maybe my new favorite Barnes and Noble. Um, honestly, not really because of the selection, but mostly because of just the vibe. Also similar to, to El Elias, I just love that they kept like and played into the really unique architecture of the space. It's just, yeah, it's just a really cool vibe. Excited that we just got to explore all these different bookshops and I'm excited to talk about all the books that I purchased today. I definitely went a little bit wild. Hello! It is the next day. I'm here with lovely Pura, Elias's kitty. And there's Elias, and Sarah's over here in the corner. He, he wants to go. <laughs> Anyways, I'm back because yesterday we had a big book shopping excursion, and I bought many books. <laughs> um, kind of forgot that I only have a carry-on, so I'm going to have to bring all of these home with me somehow, but we're going to make it work, and I'm very excited for all these, and also just like excited to support some, well, two local bookstores and then one Barnes & Noble. <laughs> But it was an amazing Barnes & Noble, so happy to support them too. 
But yeah, excited to share the books that I got. So I guess I'll start off with the first bookstore that we went to, Lost Books, and I'll talk about those books. So Lost Books was really cool. It's by the same people who um, created the last bookstore. I think I talked about that in the actual vlog. I will say that my one complaint and I have this complaint about the last bookstore, is that it's stunning, it's beautiful, I recommend going. I personally have always found it really, really hard to actually bookshop in the last bookstore just because it's just, the organization just like has never worked for me. Um, and I've heard this from other people too, so it's not just me, but the lost books also kind of had a similar issue, but I would say it was easier just because it's a smaller space so I did I, it was easier to find things and the people who worked there were also super helpful so and it's just beautiful like I love plants it was just amazing to be in a bookstore that like had so many plants surrounding and it felt very magical so anyways that's my one qualm but I still found two books so obviously it wasn't that hard to shop for books there the first one is this manga which is called the haunted bookstore gateway to a parallel universe this is the first volume and this is a manga that I believe is based off of a light novel and I was interested in it because it's basically like it's set in a bookstore and the main character is this girl who um, she's a human who has a demon for a father and her bookstore is for like supernatural people. I will say that I did look up the Goodreads reviews initially and they were pretty mixed but when I was reading the actual reviews people were saying that they basically didn't like it because they thought it was going to be like very supernatural and almost horror-like and they were disappointed by that and someone even said like I thought this was going to be more of a like horror manga but in instead it was more of like a cozy slice of life and that's very much up my alley so I was like well maybe I will really like it so I just got the first one just to see and we'll see how I feel about that but yeah really excited for this one and then this next one I found it in the fantasy section and I've been meaning to finally read Neil Gaiman for so so long and this edition was just so stunning so it is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman and it just has that sort of like old school pulp fiction style cover that I just think is absolutely stunning I love these types of covers um, and the blurb on the front says under the streets of London lies a world most people could never dream of and the cover is just so cool so basically this is set in london except there's like a dark underground world of uh like magical creatures or like paranormal creatures and that's sort of the premise of this one and i love london and i love like underground world stories so i've been keen to read it for so long so hopefully i will finally do that now that i have this stunning cover so yeah that is the books that I picked up those are the books that I picked up at Lost Books then next we went to The Ripped Bodice and I've been wanting to go to this bookstore for so long I feel like it's really famous on the internet because it's a romance centered bookstore and it's really hard I feel like to find bookstores we talk about that in the vlog that are like focused specifically on genre and especially if you love a certain genre to be able to like be in a bookstore that is just all that genre is like kind of magical and yeah I just loved that and like just having you know a bookseller who's so passionate about one specific genre too was really fun because she just like um the woman who worked there I don't know if she was the owner or not but she just like was able to really talk about basically any book in the store and was so knowledgeable and it was really funny okay so let me show you the books that I got first of all I got Drowning or not Drowning Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore and this is like a Regency romance and it sounds like such a fun romp it has that sort of like curmudgeonly main male character uh, trope that I to be honest love so I've been really keen to read this one for quite a while it just sounds adorable and super fun and then the quick little synopsis on the back of this says a daring Oxford rebel takes on a powerful duke in a love story that threatens to upend the British social order and I love stories like that too that sort of go against like the social order of things I think those are always really fun and I've just heard amazing things about this and when I went up to the till the um the bookseller just like oh my gosh that's one of my absolute favorite like regency romances so that made me really excited for it and then I ended up picking up this Tessa Dare book and I've been really wanting to read more Tessa Dare I tried reading one of her books Romancing the Duke and I really really disliked it but overwhelmingly every time I tell people that they will tell me that I read the wrong one, that they also didn't like that one, and that I should give her another chance. So I ended up picking this one up, and when I went up to the till again, the bookseller was like, oh my gosh, I love that one, that's my favorite Tessa Dare book. 
And I was like, and I told her the story and she was like, which one did you read? Did you read Romancing the Duke? So she knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, this is about a Duke who needs an heir. And so he picks this woman to be his heir. And I think they just like have a marriage of convenience. And then the romance kind of goes from there. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I haven't really read much of like this specific style of romance book to be honest so i'm really excited to finally do that so the last bookstore that we popped into is barnes and noble this is the barnes and noble in studio city and it was stunning like oh my goodness it was in an old movie theater it looked I just love that they like really kept that historical like the, the actual like character of the building like they kept all of that and yeah I just loved it so much just like being in that space and even just like outside it was so beautiful like the shot that I have <laughs> if you hear meowing Elias is currently brushing Pira anyways um just like even the one shot in the vlog of um of the outside <sighs> so beautiful i love it anyways i ended up buying for some reason the most books there uh, i really just went ham so we're gonna dive in so first of all i have been for months now trying to get my hands on the first volume of the savior's book cafe story in another world i've just heard amazing things about this manga i've heard it's super cozy it's an isekai story our main character i believe like she gets transported to this other world where she's supposed to save the world but she has no interest in that and so she decides to open a bookstore instead and have a cozy life and i love that and yeah i've not been able to find the first volume anywhere i've honestly even struggled to find the second and third so i figured i'd just buy the second and third since i actually saw them in person and then hopefully one day i will be able to find the first one i might end up having to read it digitally but i don't love reading mangas on my ipad or digitally so yeah, we'll see if anyone ever spots it online for sale, let me know. I've only been able to find it on like eBay for like $70, which is absurd. Then I picked up Oscar Wilde's um, The Picture of Dorian Gray, but specifically this is the uncensored version and I've been really wanting to read the uncensored version for a while now. Basically in the version that a lot of people do read, like in school and stuff, they've taken out a lot, from what I understand, a lot of the more overt queerness and I think that's awful so especially like you know we live in 2022 why is this not the official version or the popular version I don't know um but yeah that's what I've heard and so I've been really wanting to read the um the uncensored version for a while so that is what I got picked that one up finally and I recently read Half a Soul and absolutely loved it it is a Regency fantasy and it's it was so lovely so cozy like just the perfect mixture of, of fantasy and like cozy romance so I had to get the sequel this one is 10 thousand stitches and in this one the main character is a housemaid who ends up getting a fairy godfather and i just think that sounds so fun so i'm really excited for this one also and then lastly maybe sarah can speak to this one so this is one uh the world gives way by marissa levain or levian and i got this one so sarah was visiting me in new york city i went to this bookstore and they had like a blind date with the book and she ended up picking this one out and read it in a vlog. I did. You could go watch that. I'll have a link down below. And she loved it. So I did. Five stars. Five stars. What is this one about? So this is a sci-fi book about a girl named Mira who is a contract worker on a ship. And so to back up, basically in this world, um, it's kind of like post-apocalyptic. So Earth was undergoing some traumas. It was going to end, basically. Yeah, yeah. As <laughs> it so, does. So all the rich people were like, well, we kind of want to live. Because you, know, you know how rich people do. Yeah. And so they were like, well, let's get a bunch of scientists to build us like this giant spaceship the size of Switzerland. And so we can all like take off on this ship. And so if you were wealthy enough to buy a ticket, you basically didn't have to die when the world ended. <laughs> and so, but they were like, huh, we can't do our own labor. So we need someone to come do our work. So they- As rich people do. <laughs> As rich people do. <laughs> yeah. Our main character Mira is actually a contract worker. And at the very start of the book, the family that she is basically like their live-in maid and like nanny for um, dies. And so she has to take off on the ship with their baby and she's like running away because the other main character is a detective named Tobias. And so he, it's like a cat and mouse chase as he's trying to find her on the ship. She talked about it in her vlog and just made it sound super fascinating and really good. And it's so like underrated. Like it has yes. very few ratings, right? A thousand, only a thousand, a thousand ratings. That's really wild. So yeah, she just made it sound really good and I've been in intrigued ever since. So. 
finally picked it up. She did find it originally for Elias to purchase, but I, he's, he was too slow. He was we couldn't find him. And she saw me holding it and I was like, where's Elias? I want him to buy this. And she's like, oh, I've been wanting that. <laughs> and and Barnes and only had one copy. So I was like, well, if you're going to read it. Snoozy Liz. <laughs> Anyways, very excited for this one. So yeah, these are all of the books that I picked up today. There's lovely Kira, there's lovely Elias, lovely Sarah. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I'll have both of them linked down below. And yeah, thank you all so, so much for watching. And I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Bye!